very hard to accept. I just cannot imagine what it must be like. Similar to, to a war, to a World War II, where you have no communication, you have your children going to war. In this case, in this case, are the older people that die. Generation. Good morning, diners, and welcome to another special edition of the Cora News broadcasts here on the Collapse Cafe of the Doomstead Diner. And uh, coronavirus has totally taken over the world, okay? Uh, there's nothing else in the news cycle anymore except coronavirus. We don't hear about uh, the elections, we don't hear about jack shit, just coronavirus, okay? Uh, and, you know, uh, it is definitely a dominant story, okay? And you notice that I have on uh, my gator, all right? Uh, you know, it's a prop. <laughs> I don't need the gator inside the apartment, and in fact, I don't really need it outside either. Uh, at this stage here in Alaska. We still only have six to nine cases of uh, coronavirus. Military personnel came up on a transport and they're sequestered in uh, Jaber, uh, Richardson Air Force Base at the moment, as far as I know. And uh, nothing new, no other new ones recorded. And I'm not wearing the super duper uh, the mask underneath it, it's, I just got the gator up there, and I'll take it off, okay? Now that I got the use out of the prop. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and, uh, oh, I got I got stories to tell already on that one, but uh, uh, let me, uh, let's try to cut to the chase here as best we can. Uh, this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about more about the panic buying that went on, and is still going on to an extent. Uh all over the United States, probably all over the globe. Certainly going on in Britain. Uh, we spoke with uh, Jason Eppenstall and Monster 666 from the UK, and uh, they were experiencing similar shortages to the ones that we have here. And uh, I'm sure it's similar in Italy as well. We spoke to Hugo Bardi uh, a couple of weeks ago as well. So uh, uh, this is... Uh, systemic, you know, around the globe. Certain products. Uh, and what products are they? Okay. All right. I've got them lined up on my uh, uh, table here, uh, which also houses my brunch, which you'll see in a minute. Actually, you've already seen it. It was on the uh, uh, beginning of the broadcast. Okay. I always put, put up a picture of the meal of the day uh, at the beginning, uh, so you know what we're eating. All right. Uh, but uh, the first main thing that I noticed uh, when I went out, uh, I went out about two days maybe after the no news really broke and people started to panic, to my local grocery, uh, Three Bears. And uh, the first thing I noticed, the, short, short, uh, the shelves were bare of toilet paper and paper towels. Paper goods, none. Okay, zero. Goose egg. Okay, so here on my table I have paper towels and TP. All right, because I have both in my preps, and I have done an end around and gotten an, a great supply uh, in another way, which I'm going to save for another broadcast. Okay, <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, so those those were uh, gone. And then yeah, you see on top of them, there are a couple of eggs there. Okay, this one's hard-boiled, and it's old. Okay, I've had this one a couple of weeks in a fridge. Uh, and uh, it's going to get eaten today, though. All right, celebration. <laughs> uh, and there, there were no regular commercial eggs, you know, from the factories, from the uh, uh, chicken and egg factories that are uh, sprinkled around the world. And around the United States, uh, where they fatten the chickens up with hormones and shit like that. Uh, and uh, so, there were, though, 
two, count them, two boxes. And those cost like two seventy nine dollars a pound, okay? I mean, per dozen. Uh, there were, however, two boxes of 18 organic eggs. That's that guy, okay? Up there. And I bought them, okay? <laughs> I got the last two boxes of organic eggs at $8 per 18, all right? But I got 36 of those eggs now. That'll last me a while. Uh, and uh, so eggs were missing. And then uh, canned goods, uh, particularly canned soups. The, the rack was completely vacant of Progresso soups and Campbell's soups and so forth. All right? And uh, I like canned soups. Okay? I don't use them by themselves. I do soup emendations with them, though. All right? I start with the canned soup as a starter, and then I add stuff to it and enrich it and make it... Uh, more meaty and uh, more, uh, or more vegetably, <laughs> if it's a vegetable one and does not meet it. Uh, uh, and so, uh, one of my favorites is uh, this one, okay? Uh, clam chowder, all right? Campbell's. Uh, chunky soup, all right? And my Alaska prop fell down, all right? <laughs> and let me move these props out of the way. All right, so they're not blocking your view. Yeah, let's put the egg over here. <laughs> and uh, let's take the toilet paper out of there, too. And this egg, this egg is not cooked yet, okay? It's just a prop right now, okay? But I'll cook it soon enough. All right, I'm going to put that toilet paper here. All right, and now we're a little bit better off, okay? Start to see what's revealed behind the uh, behind all the props, all right? And to drink, of course, it is a Corona News broadcast. So, once again, Corona beer, all right? <laughs> and uh, I'm on my uh, second 12-pack now. Uh, and I still don't have coronavirus, so, you know, might be something to it. I don't know. Uh, and then, of course, Alaska Glacial Spring Water, the best water in the world. All right, uh, once again, and I refill these bottles, okay? I don't keep buying new bottles. I buy big, big jugs, and then I, I refill each of the bottles, much cheaper that way. Uh, so they're endless. Uh, and then, okay, so what's for breakfast? Now, another thing that was missing from the shelves, or the refrigerators in this case. Uh, peculiar a little bit to me, but okay. Uh, was frozen pizzas. They were out. Well, almost out. There were like, you know, maybe three pizzas left or something like that. Uh, and, uh, but I have at home leftover pizza from last week when I made a pizza meal, all right? So, I'm having cold pizza, okay, with mushrooms. Ha. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and that is uh, a pizza emendation also, all right? Just like soup emendations. Uh, the pizza uh, has extra sauce, extra cheese, and mushrooms, my favorite topping, all right? And then eggs, like I said, in short supply, so, I made a scrambled egg, all right, uh, because I'm also having the hard-boiled egg. So, that's two eggs, all right? I can't eat more than two eggs. And this is not just a scrambled egg, all right? This is a scrambled egg loaded with onions and garlic. Tons of it, all right? Because garlic in particular is extremely healthy. And it helps with your immune system, your respiratory system, and so forth. So I suggest you consume mass quantities of garlic every day, which I am doing. I'm having garlic with every meal and lots of it. All right? So you're going to see garlic featured in all of my food broadcasts 
uh, until the coronavirus has uh, resolved itself. And uh, I'm going to be buying the shit by the truckload, <laughs> as long as it's available on the shelves, which it was. Okay. And I have a certain amount in uh, storage, uh, but it dries out. You know, you can't, you can't keep garlic forever. Uh, you know, maybe a couple of weeks, three weeks, something like that, uh, for fresh garlic. Uh, the, you, you can buy the bottled stuff, though. That'll last for, you know, canned. Uh, that'll last quite a while, and it's quite good uh, also. And it saves you having to chop up the garlic if you're doing chopped garlic uh, or, or minced or something like that. Uh, so I'm having the pizza, the egg with garlic and onion, and then this is the soup emendation over here, which is a now, it's not just a clam chowder, it is an Alaska potato, bacon, and clam chowder. All right, it's got all those things in there. Plus, extra fresh heavy cream and some uh, spices, some Herbe de Provence, which is my latest favorite uh, uh, spice to be using. And uh, a little uh, garlic powder, more garlic, okay? <laughs> and it's very good. And thick and rich, oh God. I mean, you know, it just, you can't even knock it off your spoon. Uh, so... Uh, an excellent uh, breakfast prepared and uh, smokes afterwards. All right, I'm gonna not smoke now on camera, at least not today. <laughs> um, so, all right, we have a new two trillion dollar uh, rescue package for mainly business. Okay. Uh, because the business of America is business, right? Uh, but Joe Sixpack is getting supposedly $1,200 per person for adults and another $500 per child for every man, woman, and child citizen of the FS of A. And if you have direct deposit, then it should come to you faster. But I haven't got a timeline yet to see when the free money will show up in my bank account. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, though. I have it already spent. <laughs> uh, and uh, so uh, the, the cost of this, I mean, you know, we thought it was a lot in 2008 when the government bailed out AIG, you know, to the tune of $100 billion or $200 billion, something like that. Uh, so now... They're printing up two trillion plus in funny money, and it's not going to do a fucking thing. All right, uh, it's not going to put back people really back to work, and uh, you know the death rate is astoundingly high, uh, given its very virulence and the, the re rapidity that it's uh, being transmitted around the world and around the country. Um, New York City, the biggest hospitals and most well-endowed hospitals in the world are there. Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center, I worked there at one time. Uh, NYU Medical Center, also known uh, as NYU <laughs> by Columbia students. <laughs> uh, also, Overwhelmed and Bellevue Hospital, another big one overwhelmed and I'm sure all the big ones uh, you know and the smaller ones too of course uh, are uh, you know the morgues have run out of room they're setting up makeshift morgues and tents outside the hospitals all right for the dead bodies that are coming out uh, they don't have enough beds they don't have enough respirators they don't have enough masks for the doctors and etc 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 and this is only like the first week, or first two weeks, that it's really gotten bad here in the FS of A. And it's doubling, I mean, I wouldn't say every week, but, but these numbers are doubling like every couple of weeks or something like that. And, you know, you just do the math on it uh, a little bit and project it out, you know, a couple of months, two, three months in advance, and the numbers skyrocket absolutely skyrocket and on top of that 
uh, the clown in chief, our POTUS, Don Litri Trumpovetsky, is wanting to put Americans back like to work. You know, two weeks, three weeks, something like that. Yeah, we're going to all go back to work. Things will be okay. Uh, you know, I don't think so. You know, well, they could go back to work, but their work is going to be grave digging. <laughs> you know, it's going to be a big market for grave diggers here as we progress along. And, you know, right now it's on the periphery. The, the main centers, epicenters they're called, are on the periphery, on the uh, west coast, uh, sort of in Seattle, and I believe now Los Angeles is starting to pick up cases, and then on the uh, east coast, New York City, that area, all right, and then in the central part of the country, Chicago, I also believe, has a decent number of cases. So, you know, it's going to filter in and filter down from Chicago and so forth, and, you know, flyover country is also going to start experiencing uh, waves of infections and they don't have near the hospital beds and care and so forth that's available in the big rich cities like Seattle and New York you know all the best doctors want to practice in those places because that's where you make the big money right you know you service the rich uh, and you go out to the boonies and you know the doctors uh, you know they're quacks, okay? That's the best I can say. <laughs> uh, we're, full, we're loaded with quacks here in, in Alaska, let me tell you. And I can't get down to Seattle, obviously, now, uh, because, uh, well, there'd be no purpose to it, even if I did want to do the flying, which I'm absolutely not going to do <laughs> at this point. Uh, they, they've canceled all, quote-unquote, elective surgeries, which... You know, since I'm not on my deathbed, my surgery is elective, right? Uh, and so I couldn't get surgery anyway, even though the doctor said he would do it. Uh, but not now. And uh, not for the foreseeable future. Uh, probably at least a year away. Uh, you know, it's got to wait for a vaccine, pretty much. Uh, and, uh, you know, when will a vaccine become available? Also, an open question. Okay. There is no projected one in sight. Nobody has said, hey, we've got something in the works. You know, we'll have it in two months or three months. No. You know, they're saying a year, maybe. Huh, maybe. You yeah. know. So, uh, you know, without a vaccine and, and or good effective treatments, which there won't be until there's enough respirators and so forth, and that won't happen anytime soon. It's going to be a lot of dead people. I see dead people all the time. Uh, they're all walking around. Uh, up here in Alaska, though, like I said, still doing good. All right? Uh, I'm not too worried right now, although I have now self-quarantined myself. I got a nice sign on the front door. You know, says, no visitors. <laughs> and it's mainly actually for more personal reasons, and uh, I'm actually worried about getting coronavirus from somebody visiting, because nobody ever visits me. <laughs> uh, so, I'm not real worried about it, but uh, but I have my reasons for putting it up. Uh, and there are a lot of people that are worried. My tax accountant, she is not available. She's self-sequestering right now. So, uh, right now, I can't get my taxes done, unless maybe I can get her to do them from her home. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I have to work on that some more tomorrow. And I don't know if they're going to delay the uh, tax filings this year. I would think so. Uh, you know, at the very least, the IRS workers are going to be self-sequestering. Who's going to be there to do the audits and to put the uh, deal in the machine so the machine can do the audit or whatever, you know? Uh... It's, uh, you know, it's a clusterfuck, you know, every step of the way, every place, uh, you know, the, the people without work, I think, uh, you know, there are over a million new unemployment uh, applications 
uh, filed this week. The biggest number that has ever been is about 250,000 in a week. All right, so that's quadruple it. And that's in the first week. All right? So the economic hit here is outrageous. It's huge. And, you know, for this month, with a $2, $2 trillion uh, helicopter money drop from the federal government, this, you know, will make, give everybody like two weeks of breathing room. And then they're going to run out of the money. All right? $1,200 does not even pay a month's rent practically anywhere in the United States. And then, you know, the electric bill won't get paid, you know, etc. The taxes won't get paid. The mortgages won't get paid. The car loans won't get paid. Student loans won't get paid. The list goes on and on. And I personally can't see how the monetary system doesn't collapse from this. Uh, if it doesn't, we're living in the fucking twilight zone. That's all there is to it. All right? Uh, it's, it's just boggles the mind what's going on here. Uh, uh, for myself, though, I'm comfortable in the digs. i got food here to last me a couple of years. And uh, got my door locked. And not taking visitors. And just see what the fuck happens here. You know? I wanted to live long enough to see this, and I saw it. Uh, Kiyotawaki. The end of the world as we know it. It has come to a theater near you. And that's all they do. This time, until next time. Here on the Coro News of the Collapse Cafe and the Doomstead Diner. Hasta la pizza, garlic eggs, and bacon, potato, clam chowder. And Corona beer, of course.